is a text which is in the form of stuti. Stuti means glorification. Stuti can be called as stotram also. This Dakshinamurti stotram is written by Adi Shankaracharya which is a very, very important text, comes under a Prakarana Grantha. We know that any Vedantic student, if he or she wants to get Brahma Jnanam or Moksha, they have to study Prasthana Trayam. Prasthana Trayam means one is Bhagavad Gita, second one is Upanishads, minimum ten Upanishads, then Brahma Sutra. All these three put together, Prasthana Trayam. Apart from these three texts, that is Prasthana Trayam, one has to study a Prakarana Grantha also, simultaneously. That is why we are studying Prakarana Granthas one by one. Swami Chinmayananda calls this text as a PHD text, no? PHD no? advanced text. Because in this Dakshinamurti Stotram, the entire Upanishadic teaching is given. The Vedantic teacher, teaching is given. Therefore, we can call it as an advanced Prakarana Grantha. But it appears to the name we see, it is a Stotram. Dakshina Murti Stotram. But as a Stotram, we can do Parayanam. It's a very good. We get Chitta Shuddhi. That is why we are chanting in all our classes Dakshina Murti Stotram for Ishvara Krupa. <coughs> Chitta Shuddhyartham Parayanam. But Jnana Prapyartham, you have to know the Artha, meaning. Very abstract subject Shankaracharya brings here in this Stotram. <coughs> Lord Dakshina Murti is none other than Lord Shiva's manifestation, none other than Lord Shiva alone. Shiva's manifestation, another name for Dakshina Murti is Sada Shivahana, Sada Shiva. That Lord takes many manifestations. As a creator, we call him as Brahma. As a sustainer, we call that own one Lord itself as Vishnu. Similarly, as a, a destroyer, Layakarta, we call him as Shiva. Whenever that Lord performing 
one one type of function we give that name here dakshina murti is going to be as a adi guru now what is the function here lord shiva in the man as the manifestation of dakshina murti what he is going to do he is going to give the teaching as a teacher sampradaya karta adi guru brahma vidya sampradaya karta he is the first and foremost teacher of brahma vidya dakshina murti first and foremost teacher that is why we call him as adi guru vidya guru what vidya brahma vidya guru that brahma vidya guru adi guru lord dakshina murti we can call him as medha dakshina murti na medha dakshina murti a specialist in teaching brahma vidya nartha medha dakshina murti means like a, a dentist is a specialist you know dental surgeon ophthalmist the eye surgeon is a specialist in that field similarly lord also is a specialist in one one area as a creator he is the specialist brahma as a sustainer he is specialist is vishnu as a destroyer specialist shiva now here dakshina murti is a specialist in giving brahma vidya brahma vidya pradata guru adi guru dakshina murti na he alone is called as sada shiva that is why we chant the prayer verse sada shiva samarambham it has begin from the lord sada shiva who is none other than dakshina mukti shankaracharya madhyama the middle teacher is shankaracharya adi shankaracharya asmadacharyaparyantam am up to my guru my salutations so my salutations first i give to dakshinamurti sada shiva samarambha for vaishnavites also there is one shloka for them adi guru is hayagriva who is the manifestation of that lord vishnu therefore they chant prayer verse for brahma vidya gnananand mayam devam nirmala sphatika kritim aadharam sarva vidyanam hayagriva upasmahe for saivites sada shiva samarambha for vaishnavites hayagriva gnananandam mayam devam so these are the prayers especially to be chanted by the vedantic seekers because we desire to get moksha that atmagnyanam these prayers are very relevant we are seeking gnanam in these prayers so therefore every class we chant with the prayer sada shiva samarambham who is that sada shiva lord dakshina murti who is lord dakshina murti none other than lord shiva what is his special job here removing 
இந்த சம்சாரா சம்சார நிவத்தி சம்சார நிவத்தி ஹீ டஸ் பை கிவிங் வாட் ஞானம் ஆத்ம ஜானம் ஆத்ம ஜானம் ஹீ இஸ் கிவிங் பை கிவிங் ஆத்ம ஜானம் ஹீ ரிமூவ்ஸ் சம்சாரா ஹவு சம்சாரா கேன் பி ரிமூவ்ட் பை கிவிங் ஆத்ம ஜானம்னு காம கர்ம ஜென்ம மரண ஆல் கம் அண்டர் சம்சார காம கர்ம ஜென்ம மரண ஆல் திஸ் கம் அண்டர் சம்சார ஆல் திஸ் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் அஜானம் பகவான் திஸ் தட்சிணாமூர்த்தி ரிமூவ்ஸ் அவர் ஆத்ம அஜானம் ஆத்ம அஜானம் அலோன் இஸ் த காஸ் ஃபார் சம்சார அஜானம் ஏவ சம்சார காரணாத் அஜான நிவத்தி ஏவ சம்சார நிவத்தி அஜான நிவத்தி ஏவ சம்சார நிவத்தி சம்சார நிவத்தி கதம் பவதி ஆத்ம ஜான பிராப்தி திவாரான் ஸோ யூ ஹாவ் டு கெட் ஆத்ம ஜானம் ஸோ வாட் ஃபார் தட்சிணாமூர்த்தி சிட்டிங் டு ரிமூவ் that samsara saro dukha nivritti dukha nivritti sukha prapti na atma gnana prapti eva sukha prapti na so dakshina murti why he is called dakshina murti na because he is facing towards southern direction there are two meanings in dakshinamurti we will see those two meanings dakshina means southern direction we know every direction there is a devata dik devata every direction has got a devata <coughs> eastern direction that devata is called indra devata purva dik purva dik devata indra devata they are all the uh, body gods you know devatas are protecting that boundaries you know seema boundaries so purva dik devata indra devata பச்சிம திக் தேவதா வெஸ்டர்ன் சைடு தேவதா இஸ் கால்டு வருண தேவதா அண்ட் நார்தர்ன் சைடு தட் இஸ் உத்தர திக் தேவதா சோம தேவதா அண்ட் த சதர்ன் சைடு தட்சிண திக் தேவதா இஸ் யமஹான் யம தர்ம ராஜா Lord Dakshinamurthy is sitting facing towards the Dakshinam side and southern side. Murthy means a form. Murthy means a form. Dakshinamurthy means a form that which is facing towards southern direction. Dakshinamurthy means a form. a form which is facing towards southern direction is called dakshina murti this dakshina murti we worship him who is the remover of mortality samsara means what mortality who is the remover of mortality mrutyun jayaha whoever worship this lord dakshina murti that person will be protected by that lord from mortality that's why bhakta markandeya surrender to this lord sadashiva 
and protected from the jaws of yaman mrutyu bhita mrukand sunun who ever chant even he wrote a markandeya stotram that bhakta markandeya muni wrote chandrasekhar ashtakam chandrasekhar 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 pahimam who ever chant this chandrasekhar ashtakam <coughs> he will be free from mrutyu nan if you remember markandeya chandrasekhar ashtakam itself person is free from mrutyu anna what to talk of dakshina murti that stotram if you chant how much benefit you will get therefore our people generally they chant this mantra when they do sandhya vandanam or as a prayer verse another shloka is there that is he yamaya danda hastaya ధర్మాధిపత మహిషవాహనాయ సాంగాయ సాయుధాయ సశక్తి పరివారాయ హం యమాయ నమహాన్ ది చాంట్ దిస్ దర్ ఫోర్ దక్షిణ దిగ్భాగే యమ సుప్రీతో వరదో భవతు దట్ యమ దేవత హూ ఈస్ ఇన్ దట్ సదరన్ సైడ్ సుప్రీతో భవతు బై మై ప్రేయర్స్ లెట్ హిమ్ విత్ కామ్ డోంట్ టచ్ మీ డోంట్ కమ్ టు మీ ఇన్ అవర్ ప్రేయర్ అనదర్ ప్రేయర్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ కెన్ చాంట్ ఎవ్రీ డే దట్ ప్రేయర్ ఆల్సో యమాయ ధర్మ రాజాయ మృత్యవేచాంతకాయ వైవస్వతాయ కాలాయ సర్వూతక్షయాయ ఔదుంబరాయ దద్రాయ నీలాయ పరమేష్ఠి వృకోదరాయ చిత్రాయ చిత్రగు చిత్రగుప్తాయ వై నమో నమ every day if we chant this shloka we can be free from mrutyu bhayam mrutyu bhayam so one of the the biggest phobia is mrutyu fear of death fear of death is the occupies the mind of the person by chanting this shloka every day next class we will write on the board you can learn this shloka can be chanted <coughs> so yama represents uh, is the controller of that population you know that yama is the controller of the population and who <coughs> follow that uh, the rules and regulations appropriately properly at appropriate time he takes away the person so he can take away the person but he should not give fear to us you know so therefore that fear should not be there one can come out of that fear so therefore dakshina murti can be called as mrutyunjaya this is called for ishwara kripa sake we can do parayanam <coughs> and next this dakshina murti wearing that chandra and surya on his head that itself represents the kala the time principle chandra and surya kala is nothing but the other form of mrutyu kala mrutyu mrutyu devata and kala are not different mrutyu comes in the form of kala that's why kala mrutyu we call it dakshina murti is one who is keeping the surya and chandra on his head it shows is the controller of that mrutyu 
காலம் மிருத்யோனார் ஹூ எவர் கம் அண்ட் சரண்டர் டு மீ ஐ கேன் டேக் தெம் அவே ஃப்ரம் த டைம் அண்ட் ஸ்பேஸ் கால அதீதம் தே கேன் பி கம் that means i gives that knowledge to recognize they are kala atitaha nar by giving brahma vidya this is the meaning of first meaning of dakshina murti <coughs> now the second meaning is a philosophical meaning those who want to see a Uh, the depth of that uh, teaching dakshina means uh, caliber capacity samarthyam now we split the word into dakshina and amurti not murti amurti dakshina is that southern direction is uh, indeclinable word avyayam there is another word dakshina means offering aakaranta streelingaha but here dakshina is indeclinable word avyayam dakshina murti that is the first meaning now dakshina amurti suppose you take what is the meaning dakshina na the one who has got the capacity of imparting the brahma vidya uncommunicable indescribable teaching the one who can communicate that is called capacity in <coughs> caliber or srishti sthiti laya karta that capacity capacity of creation sustenance and dissolution this is another meaning of dakshina or expert in short form you can say expert who is expert dakshina murti is expert in srishti sthiti laya and who is cap- capable of giving brahma vidya samarthyam anartham capable who is capable of communication communicating brahma vidya now amurti is formless anartham a murti murti anna form na murti hi yasya a murti hi nanj tatpurusha bahuri hi samasam a murti hi anna formless how the formless god can give brahma vidya how a formless god can impart the teaching facing as though in southern direction means he is having a murti facing and anartha he is keeping his face towards the southern direction he is not having a form really really he is formless and really he is having a form figuratively for the sake of worship for the sake of worship we look at the lord with form really formless amurti hi but still we look at him with a form for the sake of worship we saw in the teni such a big dakshina murti teni ashram very huge dakshina murti to do abhishekam you have to climb this you know what eni you know you have to climb you cannot pour milk upon him by standing down so huge dakshina murti to do abhishekam to do puja archana you require a form you cannot do archana to a formless god therefore lord dakshina murti really not having form but for the sake of we give a form 
देर फॉर डोंट आस्क हाउ कैन ही टीच ब्रह्म विद्या विदाउट फॉर्म कैन रियली इज नॉट है फॉर्म सो फॉर्म इज गिवेन ओनली टेम्पररी दक्षिण अमूर्ति मीन्स निर्गुण ब्रह्म वी स्टार्ट विथ फस्ट मीनिंग दट ईज who is sitting in southern direction facing southern direction we take the first form and get the brahma vidya and say what you don't have form <laughs> by understanding that dakshina murti stotram and we later what we say oh bhagwan i understood i have understood that you don't have form first i take him in saguna form and study dakshina murti stotra understand his real nature as brahman and renounce the form understand him as nirgunam brahma correct irukilyo this is what intelligent method of worship so and you are also happy bhagwan is also much more happy <laughs> bhagwan is also much more happy and you are also happy now tell me this form is useful or not useful useful we start with the form and remove the form from your intellect you cannot remove the form from intellect you can falsify that form okay this is the second meaning i hope you are enjoying the second meaning also so first meaning is for learning sake second meaning is for owning up but that nirgunam brahma i am to own up the real nature this is the meaning of dakshina murti <coughs> first meaning is brahma vidya guru ब्रह्म विद्या गुरु टू बी ए गुरु ही मस्ट हैव ए फॉर्म देर फॉर ब्रह्म विद्या गुरु ऐ वर्शिप दक्षिणामूर्ति एंड द सेकेंड मीनिंग एज ए निर्गुण ब्रह्म एज ए निर्गुण ब्रह्म ऐ अंडरस्टैंड दक्षिणामूर्ति एंड मै सेलफ मै रियल नेचर एंड दक्षिणामूर्ति रियल नेचर इज वन एंड द सेम this is called culmination now this stotram written by adi shankara acharya in 10 verses or big verses 10 verses you know all of you that stotra in by heart so very very comfortable for me also to teach see the meaning also for these 10 verses some authors have written a commentary these 10 verses ke okay. shankara acharya wrote 10 verses upon dakshina murti what is the nature of dakshina murti whole description he has given whereas other commentators also wrote commentary upon dakshinamurti commentary upon the dakshinamurti stotram of shankaracharya they have taken this 10 verses these 10 verses and they have written a commentary one commentary is called tatva sudhana <coughs> tatva sudha is one commentary written by sarva prakashatma muni अह स्वयं प्रकाश यति स्वयं प्रकाश यति रोट तत्व सुधा इन प्रोज फॉर्म कमेंटरी इन प्रोज फॉर्म अपॉन दक्षिणामूर्ति स्तोत्र स्वयं प्रकाश यति एंड दिस स्वयं प्रकाश यति रोट Six dhyana shlokas for this tattva sudha. Just as Madhusudana Saraswati wrote 
గీతా ధ్యాన శ్లోకం అపాన్ అపాన్ వాట్ భగవద్గీత అదే గీతా ధ్యాన శ్లోకం అన్న అపాన్ భగవద్గీత హీ హ్యాస్ రిటర్న్ సిక్ శ్లోకాస్ సిక్స్ ఆర్ సెవెన్ ఎయిట్ శ్లోకాస్ హీ హ్యాస్ రిటర్న్ మధుసూదన సరస్వతి హ్యాస్ రిటర్న్ దోస్ ఆర్ కాల్డ్ ధ్యాన శ్లోకాస్ దోస్ హూ ఆర్ ఆల్ స్టడీయింగ్ భగవద్గీత దే స్టడీ దే చాండ్ దే డూ పారాయణం ఆఫ్ దట్ ధ్యాన శ్లోకాస్ వి ఆల్ ఆఫ్ అస్ నో దట్ ధ్యాన శ్లోకాస్ పార్థాయ ప్రతిబోధిత రిటర్న్ బై మధుసూదన సరస్వతి వైల్ హీ ఈస్ రైటింగ్ దట్ కమెంటరీ అపాన్ భగవద్గీత హీ రోట్ నో దిస్ స్వయం ప్రకాశ ముని ఆల్సో యతి ఆల్సో సిన్స్ హీ ఈస్ రైటింగ్ దట్ తత్వసుధ అపాన్ దక్షిణామూర్తి స్తోత్రం కమెంటరీ అపాన్ దక్షిణామూర్తి స్తోత్రం హీ ఆల్సో రోట్ సిక్స్ శ్లోకాస్ యాజ్ ధ్యాన శ్లోకాస్ దేర్ ఫోర్ టు స్టడీ దక్షిణామూర్తి స్తోత్రం ఇట్ ఈస్ బెటర్ టు లర్న్ ధ్యాన శ్లోకం ఆల్సో జస్ట్ యాజ్ యూ చాంట్ భగవద్గీత దట్ ధ్యాన శ్లోకం సో దేర్ ఫర్ మౌన వ్యాఖ్యా ప్రకటిత ఫ్రమ్ దేర్ ఆన్వర్డ్స్ అప్ టు ఈశ్వరో గురురాత్మేతి అండ్ సమ్ పీపుల్ సమ్ శ్లోకాస్ హీ హాస్ కలెక్టెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ గురు గీతా దేశే సమ్ శ్లోకాస్ ఫ్రమ్ సురేష్ రాచార్య వార్తికం దేశే బట్ ఎనీ హౌ దెర్ ఆర్ సమ్ ధ్యాన శ్లోకాస్ ఫర్ దక్షిణామూర్తి స్తోత్రం దే ఆర్ ఆల్ వెరీ వెరీ మీనింగ్ఫుల్ అండ్ హ్యావ్ డెప్త్ మీనింగ్ దేర్ ఫర్ బెటర్ వీ లర్న్ దట్ శ్లోకాస్ ఆల్సో అండ్ ద సెకండ్ కమెంటరీ రిటర్న్ బై సురేశ్వరాచార్య కాల్డ్ యాజ్ మానసోల్లాస అన్నారు మానసోల్లాస ఇట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ వార్తికం ఇట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ వార్తికం దేర్ ఆర్ నియర్లీ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ ఫార్టీ అబౌ వర్సెస్ ఆర్ దేర్ టోటల్ ఇన్ మానసోల్లాస అండ్ సురేశ్వరాచార్య రిటర్న్ ఇన్ ఏ పొయట్రీ ఫామ్ శ్లోకా ఫామ్ నాట్ ఇన్ ఫో ప్రోజ్ ఫామ్ బట్ ఇన్ శ్లోకా ఫామ్ హీ హ్యాస్ రిటర్న్ దట్ శ్లోకా ఫామ్ వెన్ హీ హ్యాస్ రిటర్న్ ఇన్ ద నేమ్ ఆఫ్ మానసోల్లాస సురేశ్వరాచార్య వార్తికం ఇస్ వెరీ వెరీ డెప్త్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ గాట్ అ వెరీ డెప్త్ మీనింగ్ దేర్ ఫోర్ వీ హ్యావ్ డిసైడెడ్ టు స్టడీ మానసోల్లాస ఆల్సో so you have to be ready to study phd eh? this is phd text adu vida manasollas further analysis but you have to be ready to get atma gnanam <coughs> that is not a casual academic study we are studying here so why i got this thought of taking this manaso lasa i will tell you that reason also even though this is the very toughest text manaso lasa first i take one shloka of dakshinamurti stotram and i take first manaso lasa he wrote some shlokas on first shloka like that i take my grandmother was reading every day this manaso lasa i saw the book in her hands every day she does you know i went and saw what she is reading you know this is dakshina murti shlokam and manasolasa she is every day parayana chanting word to word meaning she read after seeing that text and i have gone through that text and i also felt even though some portions are very very logic tarka based but still i am very much interested in taking i will try my level best to present manasolasa also so my grandmother's inspiration why i want to take this text now at the age of 85 also she was reading so therefore 
anyhow this uh, manaso lasa we will see later first we have to see the dhyana shlokas what is the first shloka we know mauna vyakhyan now that shloka we will chant all of us together since you know that shloka i need not teach you how to chant if i teach you it is like insulting you know it is i don't want to insult you let us chant together ಮೌನವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾಪ್ರಕಟಿತಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮತ್ವಮ್ಯುವಾನಂ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಾರಾಮುದಿತವದನ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ದ ವೆರ್ಬ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಡೇನ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ವೆರ್ಬ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಆಕಾಂಕ್ಷ ಫಾರ್ ಗ್ರಾಮರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ವೆರ್ಬ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಈಡೇನ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಿವೆನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ದ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಮಾಲ ಅ ಬುಕ್ ದ ತಮಿಳ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗಿವ್ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಈಡೇನ್ ಐ ಸೆಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಟು ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ who is acharyendram who is the great teacher great teacher acharyendram is the brahma vidya acharya to that dakshinamurti my salutations how he gave brahma vidya how he is became an acharya nar ಮೌನವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾ ಪ್ರಕಟಿತ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮತತ್ವ ಪ್ರಕಟಿತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಥ್ರೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಪ್ರಕಟಿತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರೆವಲೇಷನ್ ಥ್ರೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದಟ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಥ್ರೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಅನ್ನು ನಾಟ್ ನಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಥ್ರೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದಟ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ who is making that subject very clear to the listeners an artham throwing light upon that subject means who is making the listeners very clear in understanding that subject what is that subject para brahma tatvam param means supreme brahma means infinite tatva means reality para brahma tatvam who gave the systematic teaching vyakhya means giving a systematic teaching mauna vyakhya <coughs> through silence who gave that brahma vidya the supreme infinite reality who gave the teaching of that supreme infinite reality through silence who gave the revelation of that supreme infinite reality through silence to such great acharya my salutations next question how one can teach through maunam through silence how one can teach through silence many people come to conclusion silence means literally they take it as silence 
literally they take it as silence but that we should not take it as a literal meaning however much a guru is so great he cannot teach silently there are some teachers mauna guru ani per mauna guru and a silent guru an artham guru means what ಗುಕಾರಸ್ತಂಧಕಾರೋ ವೈರುಕಾರಸ್ತನ್ನಿವರ್ತ ಅಂಧಕಾರ ನಿರೋಧಿತ್ವಾತ್ಗುರುರಿತ್ಯಭಿಧೀಯತೆ ಹೂ ರಿಮೂವ್ಸ್ ದ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ಬೈ ಸೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಮೌನ ಗುರು ಅನ್ನ ಅವರ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ನೆವರ್ ಆಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ನೆವರ್ ಆಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಸೈಲೆಂಟ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಸೈಲೆಂಟ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ನೇ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಡಿಕ್ಷನ್ ಗುರು ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಸೈಲೆಂಟ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಅನ್ನ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ನ ಏನು ಅರ್ಥ ವಾಟ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಂ ಯು ಆರ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ವಾಕ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ವಾಕ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಂ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಎ ಸೈಲೆಂಟ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಡಿಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿಯೋ ಸ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದೆನ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಯು then how to take that maunam not literal meaning what meaning we have to take i will explain you in <coughs> this word to be elaborated otherwise people get a lot of confusions i said however much great guru he cannot teach silently first thing second thing suppose if a teacher is having occult powers very powerful teacher suppose her teach panna mudiyadu suppose vechikalame avarku nariya siddhi siruka my guru can teach because he is a siddha purusha he is a very great person silently he can teach even guru is ready to teach also shishya Shishya is not having any occult powers. He is very common, ordinary student. Ordinary Shishya. If he is also having powers to listen silently, he need not come here. <laughs> no? What type of understanding is there? Shishya is able to understand silently, he need not come to Guru. Therefore, Shishya cannot grasp. Silent teaching is possible by four reasons. Not talking and teaching is possible by four reasons. Not teaching. It is possible by four reasons. I will give those four reasons. Number one. <coughs> I may observe silence. i may observe silence not talking because i don't know how to question i don't know anything therefore i maintain silence i observe silence there is nothing for me to talk to teach because of this reason to answer or to question i don't know anything therefore i maintain silence i observe silence number 1 point number 1 point number 1 number 2 i observe i may observe silence not to talk because the student is not qualified enough to receive student is not having adhikara to listen such a highest teaching therefore i can maintain silence apdiyum silence a irukalam naan enak theriyamal irundadnala silence a irukalam enak nalla theriyum aanal student grasp panna mudiyadhu idu romba abstract subject ani silence a irukalam idu second reason and third reason is it is indescribable i cannot describe eto vaacho nivartante you cannot talk about that brahman indescribable 
therefore i can maintain silence i can observe silence third point because of student ignorance he is not qualified therefore i can observe silence first point because i do not know therefore i can observe silence third point is what it is indescribable therefore there is no point of describing that brahman therefore i can observe silence then fourth point is <coughs> silence that we can take this itself is a fourth point student ignorance no need of fourth point why four points three points enough okay three points enough if are necessary i will introduce the fourth point afterwards no i won't want to confuse you in the about the silence okay let me talk <laughs> so mauna vyakhya means mauna means uh, indirect description very difficult to describe this word you know and very big teaching is going to come brahma vidya first word is what mauna ma mauna vyakhya angiye or confusion innu stotram loke pole first word aadliye hamsa paadani solluva hmm first itself there is a big uh, big stone in front of us to you have to remove that stone so maunam manna the silence means here indirect expression indirect expression indirect expression means what in the description description given with implied meaning lakshanaya adhi that is called maunam you cannot describe about brahman upanishad itself is saying yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasasah words cannot reach there to describe brahman that is true then how can you describe na through implied method lakshanaya bhagatyaga lakshanaya implied method indirect method we can teach other the meaning maunam anna artha buddha sat in silence in silence and the bodhi vriksham kele ukkanne four sishyas were sitting in front of him four sishyas were sitting in front of him he is sitting in silence and four of them understood in four different ways <laughs> four disciples of buddha understood his silence this is the teaching they have understood in four different ways how they understood in four systems four buddhisms came and four disciples understood in four ways and one one disciple started his own matam shunyavada matam mad madhyamika matam vamachara matam like that they have started four disciple ore buddhan four disciples four ways they have understood edinal idenna silent a irundadinal guru has communicated the teaching in four different ways silent adhe padi par buddhar kullaye naal vidhamana philosophies iruko buddhar kullaye naal vidhamana philosophy irukuma oru gnani ki oru vidhamana philosophy dhaan irukanum அவருக்கிட்ட இருக்கிறது ஒரே பிலாசபி தான் ஆனாலும் அவர் பேசாமல் இருந்ததுனால த கண்ட்ரி காட் லாட் ஆஃப் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் குரு இஸ் ஒன் ஹூ இஸ் நாட் சப்போஸ் டு சிட் சைலண்ட்லி தட்ஸ் வை புத்தா இஸ் நாட் ஏ டீச்சர் 
we never accept Buddha as a Sampradaya Guru. Because of his silence, in the Swamini Dakshinamurthi Stotra and Chulli, Buddha Kita Bhutarana. This is a relevant place I want to tell you. This is the only occasion where can I talk about Buddhism. We are not interested in Buddhism or Buddha philosophy. How that silence, the Buddha sitting silently, how it has damaged the whole entire culture of this country. That's why a teacher is one who is not supposed to be sit silently in the society. If you want to sit silently, go to the forest. Don't sit silently in front of the people. If any teacher is sitting, we request them, please close the doors. Don't confuse the people. He has confused the people. And the Vamachara Matam, Madhyamika Matam, Shunyavada Matam, Chenika Vignana Matam, in the Matamella Vandi. And they have interpreted what? There is nothing. Shunyam. There is nothing. There is nothing to communicate, therefore Buddha sat silently. <laughs> One student understood this. This way. Shunyam. Nothing. And one one student understood in one one way. And they have interpreted as they like. And there are many followers. Not only in this country, all over the world. All over the world he has got followers. And they caused damage to this uh, Vaidika Matam. Vaidika Dharma and interpreted the Vedas wrongly and because of that Buddhism Vaidika Dharma lost its strength and its validity and its power in that country. In in the country Loki Vidharmis Vartak Karaname Buddhism. Varupakkam Namo our Avatara Purushana worship Pandra. Buddha by himself is great in incarnation, we respect him. Since he is silent and his followers interpreted wrongly, whether he has interpreted, his students interpreted, we do not know, and they have interpreted wrongly and cause damage to the country. All Vidharmi's invasions taken place at the time of exactly Buddha, after his followers. Buddha Kapram, his followers, because of their teachings, all uh, foreign invasions taken place. Once foreign invasions taken place, they attacked this culture. Therefore, Buddha statues can continue, but Buddha philosophy cannot continue on this Vedic land because he is Avaidika. He is Avaidika. Buddha is Avaidika. How happened? Because of generations gap, it has happened. If it happens, how difficult to establish Therefore, Shankaracharya took a lot of pains to establish again that Vaidika Dharma. Very difficult. Therefore, Maunam Nadev, don't apply silence here. Namakum Pesum Bodhi Tiri When Guru talking, talking, talking non stop, centuries, we are not able to understand. That a comprehensive, incomprehensible, uncommunicable communication is called maunam. Uncommunicable communication means lakshanaya, indirect way of teaching. That is the unique teaching of Brahma Vidya, Sampradaya. Very difficult, it is not available for common people. Only for thinkers, 
those who are having samskara samskrita buddhi they alone can receive this teaching therefore mauna vyakhya prakatita revealed para brahma tatvam supreme infinite reality para brahma tatvam given by whom how old are you and the dakshina murti yuvanam very young dakshina murti mauna vyakhya prakatita para brahma tatvam yuvanam varshishthante and he is sitting dakshina murti facing towards the southern side surrounded by the rishis four rishis varshishthante ante vasi residential rishis are there <laughs> mature old students age wise they are old varshishthante ऋषिगणैः न ऋषिगणैः दिस दक्षिणामूर्ति सिटिंग सराउंडेड बाय द ऋषीज वर्षिष्ठांते वसद ऋषिगणैः आवृतं ब्रह्मनिष्ठैः सो दिस टीचिंग हैज टू बी गिवन बाय दैट टीचर हु इज हैविंग ब्रह्मनिष्ठ दक्षिणामूर्ति लॉर्ड हिमसेल्फ ईज ए श्रोत्रीय ब्रह्मनिष्ठ बिकॉज ही हिमसेल्फ गेव द वेदास देर फॉर ही इज द बेस्ट 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 के अपरा चल मुड़िया बेस्ट न बेस्ट सचे गुरु इज का दक्षिणामूर्ति हूवर दो स्टूडेंट्स न सनक सनंदन सनत् कुमार सनत्सु जाता qualified students old rishis teacher is youngest students are oldest that means mature an artha sanat kumaras are mature informed qualified students with full of urge they have come to study brahma vidya therefore we are not supposed to teach brahma vidya for a non mumukshu ha eh? non mumukshu ku brahma vidya solla koodadu pasi irukka vanukku dane saapadu kudukano pasi illada vanukku and saapadu value enna theriyum anna adanalle pasi irukanum first and the saapadu ruchi appo da theriyum anna therefore enna da anna ruchi enna so hoping that Shankaracharya thinking that all are Thevra Mumukshus, let them study Dakshina Murthy Stotram. Therefore, next class I will further explain. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnath Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavasishyate शाति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ